back to the continuity with what happened on my universe mode yes it's monday night raw we've got a huge main event between brock lesnar and braun Strowman again shh, don't tell anyone and we were in reno nevada we open the show with tag team action as Mr. Money in the Bank. You might have forgot that. Seth Rollins teamed with the WWE Champion Randy Orton, who he cost a match on Raw last week. They were teaming against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, who are more than likely going to be on the same page, unlike this team. As the match began, Seth Rollins tagged himself in. Randy Orton wasn't happy about it. The match began with Seth Rollins nailing a flatliner on Kevin Owens, then going to tag in Randy Orton, but Orton obviously felt Seth Rollins could handle it himself, and he walked away, and in the meantime, a fresh Sami Zayn tagged in behind the ref's back. After that drama, Seth Rollins got hit by a Sami Zayn European uppercut, dropkick, and sit-out slam before Zayn tagged in to Kevin Owens. We got some double teamness, but then we also got a reversal from Seth Rollins, who then put Kevin Owens down with sliced bread number two. Rollins followed that up with a face buster. He went for a grapple after, but Owens reversed, hit a float over DDT. He dropped Rollins neck first onto his knee, then tagged into Sami Zayn. We got a little bit more double teamness with a double back body drop. And then Zayn put down Rollins with the blue thunder bomb. He went for the pin, surprisingly no kick out. And for the second week running, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn take advantage of dissension between their opponents. On to match number two, and it's the Raw Women's Champion, Paige. She was scheduled to take on Alicia Fox, but it was someone else beginning with A that made their way down to ringside. Alundra Blaze signalled her intent, hitting a kind of weak clothesline on Paige down the entrance ramp before putting her in the ring and smashing her with several big moves. Paige would eventually dodge a kick, hit a bulldog on Alundra Blaze and make her way out the ring, grab her belt and get the fuck out of there. And we would move on to our next segment, which saw Finn Balor in the ring with a microphone. Finn would get straight to the point, calling Daniel Bryan to the ring, a man who he teamed with a couple of weeks back on Raw. Intrigued, Daniel Bryan made his way to the ring and straight up said, What's on your mind? And Finn Balor, well, he wanted to team with Daniel Bryan permanently and trailblaze their way through the WWE Tag Division. Long story short, Daniel Bryan said yes. Finn Balor said it was the best decision he's ever made in his career. And then the pair warned the rest of the tag division, although nothing explained why Daniel Bryan exited in this way. After the debacle of the second match, hopefully we'll get an actual contest in our next match. As Bo Dallas, who was accompanied by his B-team colleague, Curtis Axel was facing off against Bray Wyatt. There's something similar about these two. Can't put my finger on it though. The match began with Bray Wyatt hitting an elbow and a running attack on Bo Dallas. He also hit a side suplex before getting distracted by Curtis Axel who got up on the apron. Bo Dallas grabbed him from behind and hit an electric chair drop followed by a neck breaker. Dallas continued the assault with a backbreaker before having his next kick reversed. Bray Wyatt got up, hit a float over DDT at the second one of the evening. He then went to the outside, grabbed Curtis Axel, kissed his forehead and gave him a nasty looking sister Abigail. Wyatt smashed Dallas with an exploder suplex before going for the Urinagi. He didn't get it though. Bo Dallas elbowed his way out and instead hit his finisher and went for the pin. But Bray Wyatt was able to kick out at two. Following this, while the ref wasn't looking, Curtis Saxel put a chair in the ring and then started fiddling with the corner. The ref went to sort out that corner, but Bo didn't get the chair braided. He hit Bo with the chair, then hit a sister Abigail, and that was it. The match was over, and Bray Wyatt got the victory despite all the odds. Going on second to last was the lone wolf Baron Corbin, who doesn't look right with hair these days, does he? Either way, he was set to take on John Cena, the evil alternate, not the tag team champion. But the tag team champion did turn up during the evil alternate's entrance, attacking him from behind and ramming his back into the ring apron. Tag champ Cena continued the beat down as the referee tried to break it up and Baron Corbin came along while John Cena was getting hit by a John Cena belly to belly. Corbin looked like he was going to get involved then decided to just walk off, you know, like Baron Corbin does and tag champion John Cena continued his assault. 
In the end, original John Cena hit a fisherman suplex on new John Cena with his leg hitting the steps. And he celebrated after. And we moved on to our main event as the United States champion Brock Lesnar, accompanied by Paul Heyman, faced off once again against Braun Strowman. Strowman then rushed to the ring and we got ourselves a big brawl between the two with both people getting a little bit of control and a little bit of a beating on the other one. Eventually the referee got control and once both men had stand up, Strowman charged again, hitting a clothesline on Braun Strowman and following that with a couple of gorilla press slams. The second one had Lesnar up in the air for a while, but after that, Brock Lesnar's trump card, Paul Heyman, distracted Braun Strowman for long enough that Brock Lesnar could hit him with a nice little German suplex. Lesnar would then grab Strowman and give him a harsh beating MMA style with those horrible elbows that tend to cut people open. He continued the beating with a horrible looking clothesline as well and a delayed gut wrench suplex. Brock's control would be short lived however as Braun Strowman nailed a reversal. He lifted Brock up for a butterfly suplex and he was up there for a while. He eventually hit it and then would hit his powerbomb fake out move. Strowman then cornered Lesnar with a big splash but would once again be distracted by Paul Heyman for long enough for Brock Lesnar to get up and nail Strowman with a move. Double backbreaker this time. And while there were only two backbreakers he went one better with German suplexes taking Strowman to Suplex City and after that he only needed one F5 to finish off Strowman which he hit. He went for the pin but unfortunately for him Braun Strowman could hashtag press LB for resiliency. Lesnar was frustrated and started beating on Strowman's face. He hit a gut wrench suplex but would once again be reversed by the monster among men. Strowman went on the offensive with a spine buster, a face plant and a big running takedown but his flying fist got caught by Brock Lesnar who quickly put him in another F5. He hit that and once again went for the pin. Unfortunately for Strowman, two F5s was too many and Brock Lesnar once again was your winner. They face off again at the pay-per-view. That's it for another What Happened on My Universe Mode. Nitro next, like and subscribe.